Well, welcome. Welcome to the Leadership Lounge. This is the fifth of our Leadership Lounge meetings uh, and where we look at leadership topics with leaders that I know uh, and we explore those topics by chatting over a cuppa uh, and seeing what we can find to help our listeners. Uh, this week I'm joined by Trevor Waldock, Anna Hennel-James and Sophie Tapscott. So it's a delight to welcome all of you. Welcome. And uh, first of all, Trevor. Trevor Waldock is the uh, founder of the Emerging Leaders uh, charity, but just recently has changed. So, Trevor, uh, what is it that you're up to now? Um, I'm just taking the leadership journey a little bit further. So I'm looking at how do we create the next generation of Nelson Mandela's. Um, I'm looking at how we put heart and character in the center of um, youth entrepreneurs. Um, so I they're the kind of main projects that I'm working on right now, as well as doing mentoring for One Young World. Brilliant. So just a little thing of finding the next Nelson Mandela's and developing them. I, I love that, uh, that concept. So you've, you've obviously worked with emerging leaders uh, for a number of years, having set it up, which obviously is, you know, is, is supporting emerging leaders across the world um, and taking that now to, to the next stage. So thank you for joining us today, giving up Present. some time to share some of your wisdom. So Great to have you on board in the Leadership Lounge. Thank you. Uh, Anna, uh, Anna is the CEO of the Orwell Multi Academy Trust. So Anna, tell us a little bit about what you do in terms of leadership. So I'm CEO of Orwell Multi Academy Trust and we have six primary schools in and around Ipswich. So um, I effectively work with the school leaders um, to run that and look after the business side of things. Uh, prior to that, I was a head teacher for I think about 17 years. Um, I've always worked in, in education, so I was a teacher and a head teacher, uh, and I'm slightly concerned about admitting it in public, but this September was my 35th new school year, so I've been at this a long time now. So, so we would class you, therefore, as a reasonably experienced leader, Anna, so it's great to have you on board. I think 35 years probably moves you beyond reasonably experienced as well, so great to have you on board in the Leadership Lounge today. And our third guest is Sophie Tapscott, who I know very, very well. Uh, but Sophie, as well as being my daughter, has uh, the privilege of being a youth worker for the Together Project at The Mix. So Sophie, tell us a little bit about what it is that you do in your role. Yeah, so um, I'm a youth worker at The Mix. Um, so that's a sort of medium-sized charity working from um, mainly Stone Market, but we support um, all young people in Mid-Suffolk. And uh, my role is... Um, to do the youth work for a particular project. So our project works with 15 to 24 year olds and um, supporting them with their next steps. So whether that's um, into education, training or work um, and really support them with their mental health and well-being as well. Um, as we're a charity, I do uh, many other roles. So I'm the um, sort of deputy safeguarding lead, if you like, alternate safeguarding lead. And so I do, yeah, a lot of work supporting the other youth workers as well with what's going on. Brilliant, brilliant. So thank you for joining us today. And uh, those who've listened to the Leadership Lounge will know that uh, we ha I have three guests. Uh, we have someone from leadership, someone who's got experience as a coach, and then someone who brings the youthful side of things. Now, obviously, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can see that we all look beautiful and youthful, and you can decide which one uh, brings that particular aspect uh, to it. Great. Okay, so our, our topic on the Leadership Lounge this month is, is the topic of balance versus burnout. Uh, and I felt this was really important for us to, to look at as leaders in the Leadership Lounge. Um, because I think one of the, the biggest lies of leadership is this sense as leaders that we feel, I must get this done. I must work harder and longer hours. I must keep pushing myself to get this stuff done. And, and I can't stop. I can't afford to stop. I must keep working. Um, and many who listen to this will know that my previous role uh, was as a head teacher. And I remember clearly my last three years working absolutely ridiculous hours uh, to the point where I have to confess there were some nights I woke up at two in the morning with a laptop, laptop still on my, de on my lap uh, and a whole literally, no joke, a sea of Zs across the screen where I had fallen asleep uh, on the laptop. Um, and then had to unpick, well, I can't send the report in like this covered in covered in Zs. Um, 
and and it was uh, probably physically that I would feel uh, it far more than I would perhaps uh, mentally or emotionally. But working so hard to this lie of leadership that I had to work longer hours in order to try and keep up. And now I work as a coach. Um, I work with leaders from all sectors. I, I used to just think it was just those in education, but I work with those in business. I work with those in the third sector. I work with those in education and. What I see is that same lie of leadership uh, is alive and well and still trying to burn people out. Um, so today I thought I would bring together three uh, of my friends to just investigate that, that balance versus burnout. What are the signs and symptoms that we can look out for? How can we avoid it? How can we put guardrails in place? And if we do fall into that trap where we either get very close to burning out or to burn out point, how do we then rescue ourselves from that, that position? So yeah. I've got you guys to help us kind of explore that. And um, I wonder, Trevor, can I start with you? Kind of what, what is balance? What does it look like in, in leadership life? Have you got any pearls of wisdom? <laughs> I wish I knew. Um, I, I think one of the things I've learned over the years, and I was very helped by this by a guy called Wayne Cordero, actually, who he kind of challenged our view of the word balance and I'm just going to grab a pencil because he said, if you take pencil it is often you think of balance as, you know, I, I, well, actually I can't balance it. But he, what he was saying is when you find the balance point, he, his point was don't move, don't move. Cause that's what you end up with. If you have that view of balance, you end up saying, okay, everything's in balance. Don't move. But of course, the reality of leadership is not like that. Life is organic. It's moving. It's yeah. flexing. Yeah. Uh, you know, something happens. You've got to move in that direction. Or as an opportunity comes on the horizon, you go, oh, yeah. And, you know, all, all the time as a leader, part of your job is to be a rider on the frontier. So you're looking for, you're almost looking for the imbalance in some respects, if you're an entrepreneur or pioneer in some ways. So, um, what he helped me most is don't think of balance in that term because it's too static. Uh, what he said is more like if you think about, and I can't do this very well on the internet, but <laughs> is you get a pressure in your life. Let's say you feel it in your marriage, for instance, and you think, oh, things are getting a little bit creaky here. So you're feeling the pressure and you experience it as I'm out of balance. And what he's saying is rather than kind of shift this way, because that'll make it worse, he said you bring your heart's attention nearer to where the pressure is, and then it gets in balance. And if you've got that view of balance, what it means is you, you're flexible, because next week it might not be marriage, it might be uh, I'm not eating well enough, or I'm not running anymore, I'm not listening to any music, or whatever it might be. So when you feel the pressure that often we call imbalance is you move your heart's attention to that place which means that balance is a constant dynamic issue it's not a static issue um so i i think to me that's been most helpful um, and to me therefore the most important thing about balance is where is my heart where yeah. is my heart yeah. is and and how is that uh, expressed in my actions in other words who is the core of who I am as an individual because that's what I have to maintain is who I am if I lose that then I've lost everything in relationships or work so who am I at the core of myself my identity call it what you will and and what practices do I do every day that guarantee I stay connected to my heart center and once I've done that, then I can move that heart center to wherever the pressure is yeah. at any given time. So that, that's kind of my first thought around this idea of balance. Yeah, so I love, most helpful. I, I love that, Trevor, actually. That's quite insightful, as you say, rather than just thinking it as some kind of ancient scale where we're just trying to keep that static. Mm. You know, what you're talking about is this emotional intelligence of, of knowing and understanding yourself first and then that mobility to be able to to know oh, hang on because i know myself i know these areas about myself i can see tension or cracks appearing here so i move to that crack and work on that and and look after that and nurture mm. that and then and there's this flexibility and dexterity the way you're talking about moving between mm. those areas um 
yeah, I think that that's really helpful. So, so Anna, why why do you think we need that as a, as leaders, and and what does that that balance bring? Um, I really love what, what Trevor was saying about the, the balance, you know, not being the scale, but putting your attention to the area where the pressure is being felt. And I think that is the, if you get that balance right, what that gives you is flexibility and adaptability because leadership, life is not the same. Is it any two days running that there's always something different? And in leadership, um, whilst there will be perhaps a certain element of routine and uniformity around your days there will also be uh, a lot of unexpected things and if you think about um, for schools you know when we came back in January of this year we did not anticipate uh, <laughs> oh, well, pandemic. a holiday we have gone into full you know national lockdown due to a global pandemic um, and that schools would be closed whilst remaining open and, and be literally um, within 24 hours we went from having you know, 420 children rocking up to school every day and having lessons used by teachers to the kids all being at home, uh, the staff all being at home and somehow continuing to sustain and deliver uh, an, an education of, you know, of good quality. I'm really proud of what our trust was able to, um, to give to our children and families and also the support for the communities. That wouldn't have happened if we didn't have leaders who understood about balance and who were kind of just in that rigid mindset well this is what I do and this is how it works you've got to be able to go right clearly there's a bit of a pandemic going on that needs my attention something else will have to give and have to wait um, and if you can get the balance right then you can juggle around and put the focus where it needs to be and then come back to the other things but if you're too hung up you know Trevor's love the analogy of that keeping it absolutely level then you you know you don't dare breathe let alone move because you'll lose it and then you can't achieve anything because you're too confined yeah mm. so, so there's this sense where the uh flexibility and dexterity mm. of moving yeah. like you would do with your own life balance moving to where the need is that that then gets almost remodeled out in terms of your leadership because you've learned that skill of moving to where the need is to kind of rebuild repair replenish grow um, that you do that you model the same so actually there's a there's a mirroring that starts to happen if we do that yeah yeah that's quite insightful and you know if I'm honest when I started this leadership lounge today I didn't 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 see that but actually that's that that's really helpful in seeing that actually what we what we model within ourselves when we lead ourselves yes. it then gets mirrored out in the way that we then uh, lead others yeah brilliant so Sophie, what, what do you do, do you, to, in, in terms of uh, holding on to balance? You know, Trevor said earlier, it's not, it's not necessarily just about this static, but it is about this when you spot things that, you know, need a bit of attention, you move to it. Do you recognize that? Do you do anything to hold on to, to balance? What is it you do? Um, so I'm a list maker. Um, for some people that doesn't work, but each day I make a list of things that at the top of the list are the things that are a priority. So I have learned to prioritise those, the most important things and sort of work my way down and to be okay that if I don't tick everything off, it can move on to the next day. As long as I've got those priority points ticked off, mm -hmm. I know that actually the, the other things can tick over. Um, for me, it's about diary management. So... Um, where I work we have an online calendar for each staff member which we all have access to each other's so um, for me it's really important that people can see really clearly when I'm doing certain things so if I'm coaching young people one-to-one -one or in groups that's blocked out in my diary because I they will know I can't answer a call um, and that I'll get back to them as soon as possible um, but uh, we sort of use this um, analogy of like plate spinning and sometimes you're spinning too many plates at the same time and something's got to give because one of them's going to fall off. And for me, that needs to be the one that is a lower priority. Um, so I've had to learn that. Um, definitely would uh, probably learn that the hard way and that I've dropped plates as such. Um, things have either slipped my mind, I've forgotten about them, or like I haven't done something that is maybe more important than other things. So yeah, for me, it's diary management and having a physical list that I can see 
um, whether that is yeah on a, a laptop or on your phone or I like to write it because it just helps me process things as well um, and I like to tick things off in different colours because it looks good then when you've ticked them off. Um, I think I'm my uh, father's daughter in that sense. But, uh, yeah, I, I like doing it that way, but it's got to work for you um, as an individual. You can't do the same thing as everybody else. Um, but yeah, I think that's probably the main things I would say for me. Yeah, so for you, it's about making sure, first of all, there aren't too many plates that are spinning by creating the list that make that possible. Uh, and then being really clear on what what your main priorities are so that if you do have to drop a plate it's not the one that's got the most important things on it for you yeah that's great so so this uh you know we've, we've thought a little bit around balance but but what about this this burnout you know is burnout the opposite of of balance uh and, and have you ever experienced any hint of of burning out and, and what would those signs and symptoms be any anyone got some thoughts on that one I don't know that, that I'd say burnout is the opposite of balance. Um, I think burnout is what can happen when you don't have the balance right and there are too many additional pressures as well. I, I, I think you know, we, can all, um, we can all manage stress and pressure uh, and in fact we, you know, we need it as human beings. We need a certain element of it to function um, and it's having that, that balance around that. Um, and if you don't have the balance, then, you know, so if you've got, I've dropped so many plates in my time. And I tell you, as you get older, writing it down is really important. <laughs> it doesn't hold as much stuff anymore. Um, but I think burnout is, um, is maybe more to do with your expectations of yourself or what you're trying to prove to other people. Um, and when you... Maybe when you, you, you can't hold that bit in balance, that can become overwhelming. And then you, um, you're just more concerned about what other people are, are thinking or seeing or the expectations of it, and you just keep going. And then you do lose sight of the balance. But I don't think it's just you've lost sight of the balance. I think you've lost kind of the, um, the sight and measure of everything else. Um, mm -hmm. I think burnout is when you're like completely swamped. Yeah, yeah I, I agree with that. Burnout's almost what happens when you go over your max, like everyone has a maximum that they can take on and um, successfully do and to do well. And I think burnout is when you've passed that mark mm -hmm. and either you haven't admitted it to yourself and you're still taking more on um, or you're just, yeah, you're not coping and maybe not listening to people around you. Yeah. 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 And, and just so. So, uh, it's interesting hearing that some of it's about the perception that we have of the situation so mm -hmm. Epictetus the uh, I think it was a Greek philosopher talked about it's not the thing it's our perception of the thing that causes causes the problem mm -hmm. um, so there's there's probably an element about our perception of it but equally it can be sometimes is there is there too much coming in for our, our brains to cope with it um, I think if you just take the word burnout, the, the whole idea came from uh, th that something is burning up fuel and there is no more fuel to burn. Yeah. Um, so, you know, if I, I'm sure with the pandemic, Anna had some incredibly stressful days. Therefore, she was burning up a lot of fuel. Yeah. So it's not the burning is the issue. It's that you keep on burning <laughs> to the place where there is there is no more fuel. Yeah. So I think it's that's the thing to be watching. It's not did I have a busy day, but have I gone on living like this? You know, it's not that I had a fish and chips yesterday. It's am I eating that kind of food every day or whatever it may be? And I, I think the other thing is I, uh, I think burnout has slightly become short. I, I think there are five different kinds of burnouts that people experience. And I think it's worth just kind of expanding the word a bit, you know, because people burn out physically. Mm -hmm. um, they burn out mentally. Mm. Um, and they burn out emotionally. They burn out morally. They burn out spiritually. Um, so I think it's worth saying that because then I think it just, it probably widens the thing out to reach more lives 
is big people might say, well, I'm still, you know, I'm still going to work. I'm still putting in my 16 hours a day. I'm physically fine. Yes. And you yes. say fine, but um, uh, how are you sleeping right now? Oh, well, I'm not, I'm not really sleeping. Well, you know, when did you last have a new thought? Oh, I, I, you know, I'm just recycling old thoughts. I've been doing that for months now. You know, it's, it's the, the, the symptoms of burnout can be seen in, in certainly those five areas when the tank is empty and it symptomizes yeah. um, for different people in different ways at different times, I think. Yeah, absolutely. I, just hearing you saying that, I was thinking, uh, for me, if I, if I think back to when I was a head teacher, it, it probably would be physically that I would feel it way before I would feel it um, perhaps mentally or emotionally. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and I just wonder, actually, did different people have different kind of thresholds for the, those different burnouts? So actually, although we're talking about, you know, what are some of the signs and symptoms for, for different people, those could be different signs and symptoms. So you were talking about how, how much have you been sleeping? How are you sleeping at the moment? For others, it can be about, well, actually, what's your diet like? Are you eating well? Are you exercising well? Yeah. Are you feeling physically? Um, Actually, are you still meeting up with friends? You know, how, how are you feeling emotionally and confidently yourself? For different people, there will be those different signs and symptoms. And for me, it might be, actually, I'm knackered and I'm falling asleep in the middle of meetings. Might be yeah. during meetings, but it might be because I'm physically exhausted. You know, yeah. I might still be, yeah, but I'm not burnt out because, you know, I can still yeah. live in the world, but, <laughs> but I'm falling asleep. So for me, my signs and symptoms might be very different to somebody else's do, do you think there's there's something in that yeah i think it is and, and it's I, and that's why i came back to identifying the heart center and and what activities we do around it i spoke to a ceo the other day i was a little concerned uh, and i i knew her very well and i said i are you meditating every day because i knew for her that was a in terms of who she is that's very very important to her so yeah. i thought if you've stopped doing that <laughs> Yeah. something's up and she said no you're right i haven't done it for three weeks yeah. um for other people it might be music you know they listen to music music feeds them and they say well no, i haven't listened to any i haven't had time or or writing or whatever so i think it's different different for everyone isn't it i think it's about knowing yourself well enough to know what are those um kind of flashing lights if you like yeah. Yeah. that tell yeah. me that I'm, I've moved from a full tank to I'm um, kind of getting near the, the red line. Yeah, absolutely. So it's about that emotional intelligence, knowing yourself first. What is it that, that feeds me? And actually, if yeah. I'm collecting the thing that I know feeds me, that I know is important to me, then that is, that is one of the signs that starts oh. to flash up. Um, I, uh, I spoke to one guy once, he was um, HR director for a finance company in the city and I hadn't seen him for ages and I said, how are you doing? He said, actually, I've been off sick for a while. He said, I was, oh, I'm sorry. He said, I had a nervous breakdown. And he said, I, I realized when I put my 18th tea bag in one cup of tea, there was a big problem. <laughs> so anyway, and I, I said, what was the issue? He said, well, I, had, I was the guy who had to take uh, about 250 people and tell them they'd lost their job. So hour after hour, I was sitting with people breaking this news. And he said it was just every conversation was draining me yeah. because I was absorbing their emotion. And what he's saying is, you know, if you imagine a petrol tank, every conversation was going <laughs> and, and to the point where he wasn't noticing how much fuel was coming out of his tank with a, a draining conversation. And I think a lot of leaders have draining conversations or draining meetings and don't pay attention to the fact that it's going in terms of their fuel tanks. Yeah. Yeah. And so that, that there's a responsibility for ourselves, isn't there to kind of be really aware of ourselves and look for that and spot that. But sometimes we don't, we're, we're so caught up in, in this. Um, so Anna, you know, when you work with someone and you spot that in them, you know, that what Trevor's just talked about there, um, how, how do you manage that sympathetically? Have you ever, obviously no names mentioned, but have you ever come across that? And have you been, did you manage it sympathetically? Um, I think so. I, I think it, it's tied up in a lot of, of the things we, we've been saying um, around that, that we all have um, different capacities and I, Somebody gave me a really good analogy once um, around how basically we all have a, a cup 
but our cups are all different sizes. So, you know, what it takes to fill that cup is different. And at some point, we can all get to the stage where our cup is full and, and then overflowing. So it, it's recognising that everyone is different in terms of their capacity or how they process and deal with things. And also recognising that the way you might choose to manage situations which are difficult and stressful isn't necessarily the right way for everything else. So it's about knowing your your team and your people and what works for them and what makes them, um, you know, feel more or less pressured. So I have conversations, um, you know, with senior school leaders all the time around, you know, you were sending me emails at one o'clock in the morning, you know, when you should have been in bed asleep. But if that person um, is a real night owl, uh, and likes to, you know, come home from work, have a period of time off, maybe doing family stuff or just switching off and exercising or something, and then go to their emails, um, you know, and do emails at one o'clock in the morning and then go to bed and then get up a bit later. But if that works for them, that's fine. And to, to try to kind of like nag somebody and be saying, oh, you shouldn't be sending me emails at that time too late, that actually puts more pressure on them and more stress because they feel they're being criticised. So it's being mindful of what works for them um, and then knowing, you know, if those emails then start coming at two o'clock, three o'clock, four o'clock in the morning, well, that's, you know, that is probably pushing it a bit for anybody. Uh, and that's a point to have a conversation. But it, it to, um, it's very easy as a leader to impose your own experiences and things on other people. Uh, and in trying to be helpful sometimes and in suggesting to people that, oh, no, you need to switch your emails off by, you know, eight o'clock in the evening. That for some people at that point in life just doesn't work for them. Um, and so it's, it's kind of like letting them manage it in their own way and being mindful of that though, but just looking out for signs that it might have moved beyond them managing it in their own way and it's no longer manageable for them. Yeah, so, so some of the stuff you're talking about there is actually getting to really know the people you're working with to know what their normal operating yeah. approach is. And then if you start to see things and signs that actually are, are kind of beyond that, that that indicates that they might be in a in a zone. And then it's asking them the question and, and asking them what works best for them rather than, as you say, imposing your your approach. Um, yeah. Yeah. So Trevor, I talked earlier uh, about the lies of leadership that can perhaps suck us into burnout. Uh, have, have I got it right there? Are there lies of leadership just sucking us in? Um, <laughs> and, and and you know kind of what are those and if, if that's true I, i'm sure there are lies of leadership i'm sure there are lies of life any kind of misperception is a, isn't it um i i, I don't think anyone's going to put them out as a, in a rule book of lies i think what often it's it's our observation of others um so when i started out right at the beginning in leadership when I was like late teens, 20, is the role models of leadership I saw were people who were on the road all the time, away from their families, speaking all over the world. And it was like, oh, that's what it means. What it means to be a great leader is your family comes second. And, you know, so um, and nobody ever said that. And if you ask them, they disagree with it. But if you looked at their lives, yeah. then their life was the lie. Um, so I, I think it's more, um, it, it's often a, about what we observe in others uh, and maybe we want to be like them. So I think that we probably need to look at ourselves and say, why am I trying to be like someone else? Um, and often the reason is because we admire them and we think they're great and we think we'll be great if we're like them. Um, well, that's an ego issue and we need to deal with you know, the work needs to be done within ourselves. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's, uh, I, yes, I, I don't, like I said, I don't think anyone's going to put out a rule book of lies. Um, <laughs> but I, I, in two years ago, probably one of the leaders that I was most helped by and most ad, admired had a, a, what would be seen as a moral breakdown um and um you know i've been through ups and downs in my own life and people would look at that and i i 
I think we should be much more forgiving of leaders. Yeah. Um, but the interesting thing when you said about burnout is the people that I have been most helped by on this issue have all burnt out, mm. all of them. Um, and the reason why they probably helped me is because they've been there. They know it. And, you know, I've burnt out. So I, I want someone to talk to me who actually knows what that experience is like. Um, so I think a lot of wisdom can come from the supposed crashes. And I think, um, I was going to say, a, a burnout well used is is an open door to increase wisdom, basically. Mm. My, my experience has been there are things in my life that wouldn't have changed unless I hit the wall because I wouldn't have listened. Yeah. Uh, and it's like letting uh, T.S. Eliot talk about the, the, the surgeon plying the knife. I think the burnout puts in the surgeon's knife if you let it and gets to places that you wouldn't sign up for on a good day. Yeah. Um, but you're, you're really glad of the experience, however painful it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the ultimate, as you say, you wouldn't have chosen it, but actually it can be used for good if you choose yeah. it do so both in your own life to make sure you don't go there again yeah. or in the life of others to help them not to to head there yeah. um so so one of the things that can be helpful is just trying when we when we begin to know ourselves and we know how we normally operate is putting in guardrails so if you think about the you know when you travel up a mountain pass there are those guardrails on the edge of the mountain pass to stop you flying over the edge uh, that, that, you know, okay, if you went up against them in your car, it would cause some damage, but it's, it stops you ultimately from really damaging yourself as you fall down this precipice. So there's this sense for us as leaders, uh, knowing ourselves well and putting in guardrails to, you know, kind of just be that earlier warning sign to stop us really uh, going into deep burnout. Um, so, so what about these guardrails? Um, Sophie, are there any that you know for yourself that you, you put in place to kind of help and protect you from, from burning out, things that you've learned already? Yeah, so I think it's um, being honest. I've got a couple of colleagues that I'm just really, really close with that um, we're on the same project. We're very much, in terms of work lives, we're like, we, you know, we come as a pair sort of thing. Um, for one in particular, for the past six months, me and her have worked really, really close um, at keeping things running during um, this sort of pandemic. So we've been doing the youth work for the charity and we had to be really honest with each other when we were struggling. And even if it's the smallest thing, I think just, just having someone, um, whether that's in, the, in your professional capacity or um, in your personal life, where you can just say, actually, do you know what I'm struggling with this one or I'm feeling like I'm getting to the point of burning out or I'm getting irritable or you know all these things that you know in yourself isn't you isn't your character Mm. that you can just say to that person I'm feeling like this not necessarily for an answer to fix it but almost to hold you accountable um and to be able to have that conversation with someone for me that just really helps um and I have that personally and professionally depending on who I need to talk to Um, it's just helpful and to have someone that knows you and can also challenge you on it as well so not just you say to them actually I'm feeling like this but for them to say to you are you doing okay I feel like you've got too much on your plate right now um and you've given them that permission you've got that relationship with them that friendship with them um it might be the same person in both aspects of life but yeah for me that's has been the one thing that's stopped me from going back into a burnout sort of position. Yeah. I love what you say there about giving people permission as well. So it's about choosing those people carefully that you know you can trust and that they know have your best interests at heart, but choosing them so that they, when you give them permission, that they will speak into your life and will say, exactly as you said, are, are you okay? Cause I'm just seeing this. And this was one of the signs and symptoms you told me to watch out for. Uh, yeah, that, that, that's brilliant. Uh, any, any other guardrails from, from anybody else that you kind of have? I mean, I, I entirely agree with Sophie. I think it's having people um, who will call you out on that. Mm. And 
and actually really challenge you because I think it is very easy um, to be head down in it and, and to, to get yourself into a position where you believe that you are the only person that could do this piece of work, you're the only person that could be managing all of this. Um, you know, truth be told, none of us are uh, indispensable. Um, and I think that's part of managing that is, yes, having people to call you out on it, but also um, holding on to it and reminding yourself of that. Um, and years ago when I was in my first um, deputy headship, I was very lucky that I worked with a, a head teacher who believed in investing um, in staff and, and basically sort of gave me a budget to spend on my own training and development. Um, probably wouldn't happen these days because school budgets are so rubbish. Mm. Um, but I did some, some interesting work with some um, really people. And I've always held on to um, something that, that one of these um, sort of coach people said. And that was like, um, as, as a head teacher, supposing the unthinkable happens and you, you know, manage to go and get yourself run over by a bus or something, um, within three days, the local authority or your trust or whatever will have started the process of, of put somebody in to, to like hold the fort. Within three weeks, they'll be bringing together the governors and whoever to start the process of recruiting uh, for your replacement. Within three months, your replacement will have been appointed and, and be in post. And within three years, if somebody went into that school and mentioned your name, half the people wouldn't know who you were. Mm -hmm. um, and when you kind of put it in context like that, it's sort of like, yeah, actually, I'm, I'm not that important that the world is going to end if I don't get this done. Uh, and it can be really, really hard to hold on to when you are absolutely in the midst of it. And that's where having good um, friends and colleagues to not, yeah, okay, at times we want a bit of tea and sympathy and the poor you, you're working so hard and isn't it awful, it's so stressful, but you also want somebody to say, so what are you doing about it? How are you managing it? Are you looking after yourself? Because if you don't look after yourself, nobody else will, nobody else can do it for you. Yeah. Um, but somebody like holding up that mirror to you, really. Yeah, and just asking you that question, you know, yeah. is your tank running low in terms of yeah. that fuel up and that challenge? Yeah. So, so people are, are really important in terms of, of those guardrails. Uh, Trevor mentioned earlier about, uh, you know, actually being kind to ourselves as leaders and just recognizing that actually all, all experiences can be used for good. Um, so, so is burnout or near burnout, can it, can it ever be good? Is it just about being able then to help others and to remind us not to go there again? It is, can there be any more? Anybody got a view on that one? I, I, part of me thinks for someone in a very high-pressured leadership job in a long period of time, I, I find it hard to see how they would avoid either coming to the edge of burnout or actually going over the line. I find it hard. So that, that's, that's why I say I think we need to be more forgiving so I, and I think there is so much learning in it. Um, you know, if I, uh, how, how does life get your attention without sometimes whacking you around the back of the head? <laughs> you go, oh, I didn't see that coming. And they go, yeah, well, actually now you see that was coming for the last three years, wasn't it? Oh yeah, it was, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Um, so I, I, I definitely think good's going to come out of it. I never would sign up for it. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, and, um, and and yet I think there is there is good, and I think there is good wisdom for yourself and good wisdom to share and good um, a kind of kindness and empathy that allows you to work with other leaders. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think to me the biggest thing has been uh, I come back to the issue of the heart. You know, the ancient proverb said, "Guard your heart." For that's the the wellspring of life, and I, I still come back to there. Is 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 what practices are in place to make sure I am guarding my heart. And uh, I remember working in South Africa. I'd been working for a long time in Kenya in very very high stress, and then we moved to South Africa and were continuing working there. And I remember just feeling uh, quite worried about myself because I could feel I was getting thin. I don't mean physically thin. I mean emotionally thin yeah and um and i just something new i just kind of said if i don't 
if I don't build in the daily practice of meditation, this will kill me. I, it was that strong. This will kill me. Uh, and and that ever since. Uh, and the reason for that is it's a, a, a period every day of having to just shut up <laughs> and be still and be present. And in that presence, you can then hear the noise in your own head, if you like. And that's not always pleasant. You can hear what you're worried about and anxious about. And that, uh, whereas when you're just busy, 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 without that reflective space, often you ignore all of that busy, busy, busy noise. Yeah. Um, but for me, it's practices around how do you guard the heart um, and then the other things around that, you know. So there's this sense where from it, it can actually help you create new rhythms within your daily practice that... Mm -hmm that ensure you look after yourself, your heart, your yeah. character in who you are, which then, like you talked earlier, Trevor, about those different types of burnout, that mm. creating those new rhythms, that, that space, uh, and, and depending, again, what, you know, if you think about the types you talked about earlier, actually, if it's physical burnout, then actually the rhythm that you might need to create to, to protect that part of you might be about better exercise. It might be about better sleep. It might be about better diet. Mm. Actually the area that, that, like you say, moving to this point of, of where I do, I need to give myself time. If it is about this, uh, you know, the spirituality or the morality part that you've worn thin, then that's, you know, I need to get some new rhythm. E.g. is that some form of meditation or is that just some, some form of just rest whatever that might be. Mm. And so this, yeah, the, the burnout can be used for good to help us create better rhythms to then create better uh, ways of, of living and protecting for ourselves as we go forward. Um, so so what, we've just really got time for just uh, two main questions, really. One, one is just thinking about if we do find ourselves there, how can we be kind to ourselves? How can we be kind to others who are in it as well? And then we'll move on to just the top tip from everybody as to how uh, what, what you think would be your piece of advice for people around balance and burnout. Um, so what about if we find ourselves in this or if we find others in it, um, you know, what should be our, our steps or our practice if we're in there? How do we tackle that? I think you have to, when you find yourself going there, it's, to, it's hard, but to try and, you know, press that pause button. Um, and, you know, as Trevor said, maybe something, if you are a person that meditates, um, absolutely doesn't work for me. I can't do it at all. But I could, you know, stomp off, you know, around the fields or something. Just get away from it. You know, it's more my kind of thing, some, some physical movement with it. Um, but it's giving yourself permission to, to take that time. And that can be the hardest thing. And when there's, you know, like, you know, Sophie with her list, when there's 50 million things on the list, the thought of pressing that pause button, um, it's changed because I haven't got time to stop. And, and I can remember, you know, I've said that myself to people who are have been trying to help me and to say, this is looking like it's getting too much and, you know, let's have a conversation. What can we do? To, and, you know, I haven't got time for that because I've got all this to do. Um, so it can be, you have to be really um, firm with yourself and accept, you know, actually, uh, if I'm feeling like that, then now is the time to go, yeah. I need to stop and I need to, to step back um, and think. And, and, and I think it will be, sometimes it's something odd that will make you realise you're getting there. And, and I think, you know, when we've talked about the different kinds of burnout and the physical and, and people don't sleep, and I know for myself, but normally, you know, when my head hits the pillow, bang, I'm gone, uh, and I don't wake up till, like, you know, seven, eight hours later. So for me, I know that if I'm waking up in the night, um, that's a warning sign, and it's like, tuning in and acknowledging those warning signs and then saying to yourself it, it's okay um it's okay to feel pressured and to to feel like there's too much going on and it's therefore okay to go right i just gotta stop a minute um sort sort things out sort through this and regroup before i can move on um, yeah. and i hope that that culturally within society we have moved away from that time when um, it was more about being seen to be working than the productivity of what you were doing. Yeah. And I hope now we recognise far more that we are often less productive when we are trying to do too much or when we haven't recognised that we are reaching that burnout stage. Um, and I think there's still a way to go, but I think we are more 
mindful of, of that and, and kinder to ourselves and to others when we recognise that. Yeah. Um, you know, we should all have a great big pause button on our desk. <laughs> Enough. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's recognising ourselves and then recognising that ability to mm. press pause is okay. Mm. Uh, and actually it's the sign of a good leader to actually recognise my tank is running low, I need to press pause, I need to refuel. Um, and, and to be kind to yourself as part of that. Um, great, thank you, Anna. So it's time, uh, leadership lounge time is always uh, time flies because uh, we're having fun, uh, <laughs> as, the, as the adage says. Um, it's time for that kind of our top tip. Uh, you know, what would our top tip be for people around balance uh, versus burnout or balance and burnout? You know, as we've explored that, what would your top tip be going forward? So um, this is where one of you has to answer relatively quickly and then the others get a slightly bit more thinking time. So uh, and one of you goes, Don, why did you choose me? And Sophie, I'm going to choose you first. Uh, th thanks, said so. For those of you watching on video, she's now male. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm just giving you a little bit more thinking time by doing that. Um, so what would your top tip be uh, just in terms of managing and getting balance uh, in life and in leadership uh, and around um, burnout? What's your top tip? Um, so I think mine would be to learn to say, no, I can't take that on or no, I don't have time to do that right now, but let's see who else could help rather than, yeah, just point blank refusal but you know if they're looking up to you they're coming to you because you're in a leadership leadership position um actually it's not always helpful for me to say yes fine I'll do it or yeah no worries leave that with me actually it might be well why don't you give it a go and then I'll help yeah. or uh, let's ask this person so actually yeah being sensible is it right for you to take it on can that person do it themselves so that it's not on you or is there somebody, just somebody else that can do it? Um, yeah. Is it a priority for you to say yes to that right now? Um, so yeah, my top tip would be to learn to say no. Great. I love that. And I love the fact that it's, it's that having strength in yourself to say no, but I love that you're not just saying no blank refusal, this sense of how do I then help this person to find the solution that they need? So it's not a blank refusal, but it is about you just knowing yourself enough to know actually it's important I say no at this point. Brilliant, thank you. Uh, Anna, back to you. What's your top tip? Um, well, I was going to go with something almost exactly the same, same as Sophie said. And Great again, minds think alike, that sort of thing. A long time ago, which was if, if you never say no, then what's your yes worth? Um, and I just, I, I think that's, mm. you know, that is key in, in whatever you do. Um, and the other one, which, you know, I don't wish to offend anybody by it, but frankly, you know, you for anybody if you're dead. Um, mm. So, you know, you, you've got to look after yourself and, and sort it out because otherwise you can't do the job at all. Yeah, yeah. So that is really a sense of knowing yourself, knowing your value as a person as well, uh, and just investing into that um, and just protecting yourself, as you say, from the, the ultimate uh, mm. burnout, which we, we, we obviously don't want anybody going through. Thank mm. you. Trevor, what about you? What's your top tip? Um, mine is um, have a ruthless focus on your joy. You see, um, I, I, the, I think it was Paolo Coelho who said, say, when you've lost your joy, you've lost your way. Yeah. And it's very easy to lose your joy. You know, you can see it in teaching. People went into teaching and they loved it, but they lost their joy. Yeah. And leaders started up these amazing entrepreneurial projects projects but they lost their joy or someone who in the youth work because they were passionate about young people but you notice they lost their joy and i to me that's that's the indicator once your joy is gone something you, you've shifted off center yeah um and so i would say ruthlessly monitor your joy brilliant be honest about when you um when you've lost it because that, that will tell you yeah yeah, and there's this sense then if you feel you're starting to lose your joy, that is again one of the yeah, symptoms to, to watch out for and that you try and get it back. And you say that ruthlessness in, in seeking it yeah. is then absolutely crucial. Brilliant. Thank you. 
Guys, our time has run out. So thank you ever so much for being part of uh, the Leadership Lounge, for sharing your wisdom, for sharing your honest thoughts, and for us just exploring this sense of uh, balance and burnout in a different way. And, uh, and that ability, as we've talked today, of just kind of seeking where those areas are that we need to rebuild and inject into this sense of uh, kind of being able to say no so that you can constantly be seeking, as Trevor's just talked about um seeking that joy so that you can look after yourself so that we don't end up as as Anna has just said with that ultimate burnout um you know you're no good to anyone unless you're looking after yourself uh, as well so yeah. thank you for uh, taking part today my, my my thanks to Trevor to Anna and to Sophie for joining us thank you to you the listener and joining us on the leadership lounge and we look forward to you joining us again next month with another three guests but for now thank you and thank you Anna Trevor and Sophie for your part in the leadership lounge today thank you